welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. Today I have for you this gorgeous puzzle by Tanya Wicks Photography. It's called Citrus Burst and you can see why. It has lots of lovely juicy looking citrus fruits of all different colours all over it and the longer I look at it the more I feel like I want to go and sink my teeth into an orange or something. It just it's such a bright fresh looking image. It makes me feel healthier just looking at it. <laughs> It really is a bright and gorgeous image, which makes sense because Tanya Wicks is first and foremost a photographer and she has recently released um, her line of puzzles, which is um, based around her photography. And to be honest, the ones she has released are so lovely, it was hard for me to pick which one <laughs> to get. Um, but I, I really wanted to do one because I'd seen a lot of um, the puzzles on Instagram and I thought they'd just look really lovely. So I got in touch with Tanya and I asked her if she delivered to the UK because uh, she's based out in Australia. And she said, yes, I do. And um, she uh, offered to gift me one of the puzzles if I just paid for the postage. So I want to thank Tanya very much for doing that because I'm so glad I've now got this. I'm really looking forward to giving it a go. And the other thing I want to thank Tanya for is that when she sent this puzzle to me, it came with this lovely postcard, which is another one of her photographs. And it's another one of her puzzles, actually. It's the feathers. Um, she sent this to me with a note on the postcard and also this tea bag <laughs> which I thought was just lovely because as as a Brit which I am um Tanya thought that I would enjoy doing the puzzle with a nice cup of tea and indeed we Brits do love a nice brew however I think I'm going to enjoy the tea later and do this puzzle instead with a nice glass of citrusy lemonade the puzzle image sweeps across the top of the box and wraps around the sides as well Although the image is partially obscured by a bar of information across the bottom, I love how it gives you all of the relevant information you would want to know about the puzzle in neutral tones, keeping the eyes drawn to the beautiful image and not forcing your gaze towards a busy or bold block of text. Similarly, there is a minimalist feel on the sides of the box, other than a neutral coloured logo of Australia, where Tanya Wicks is based, the sides are entirely image focused, and thus it becomes an instantly recognisable piece of art on your shelf. Most of the text is to be found on the bottom of the box. The art of mindfulness heads up an explanation of the immersive sensory nature of Tanya's puzzles through which one can have a relaxing and mindful puzzling experience. At the bottom is the website, another proudly Australian logo and a choking hazard warning for children aged three and under. Overall, I think the box feels of high quality with strong rigid cardboard, a striking image and it conveys Tanya's passion for her photographic art as much as I'm sure the puzzle will. Right, let's get the lid off this lovely box and put that there. Right, we have the bag of pieces, which is, ha ha, it's resealable. Yay, that's really, really good. Uh, so we'll pop that there. Um, and we've got a couple of things on the bottom of the box. There's no other information printed inside the box. So I'll just put this over there, slide the lid on uh, and pop that in the corner. So the first thing is a um, card, a thank you card. Thank you so much for your order. You are supporting a small Australian business. Share your puzzling experience on social media at Tanya Wicks Photography. I will do that, most definitely. I uh, love your puzzle. I would love your review on Google. And then there's the website, www.tanyawicks.com.au and it says with thanks in the corner, so that's nice. And then we have, oh, we've got a poster. I do like it when these puzzles come with a poster. This looks like A4 size, but it's a good, clear, full image of um, the puzzle, which isn't obscured by any, you know, anything that might be on the box and stuff. So I really do, I appreciate when a poster comes because it's just another reference point when you can't necessarily use the box or when, perhaps when the box image is too small or something like that. So that's really, really good. So I'm just gonna put those, I'll put those to one side so that they're not kind of in the camera shot. And we will get this lovely reusable bag opened up. And these look like lovely pieces. Mm. 
Right, okay, so already these pieces feel really, really sturdy. They look thick, just, just looking at these pieces, they look like good, thick, sturdy pieces. So what I'll do is I'll just pull a few out and I'll have a look at the shapes and things and just uh, go through kind of what the pieces are like. Feel a little bit dusty, but not beyond the norm. Um, so the cardboard on the back is kind of a grey blue. Um, the pieces are really good and thick. They feel so sturdy, there's no real bend or give in them at all, which is brilliant. The um, the image appears to be well kind of stuck down to the piece. I don't see any peeling pieces or anything like that, just at first glance. Um, the, they look, they're a lovely matte uh, finish it, they, and they feel soft as well. Um, they don't quite have the velvet finish of, say, an Art and Fable puzzle, the, and not that I was necessarily expecting that, but they do feel very soft, which is nice, and I think that um, the matte finish is going to be amazing uh, because, obviously, you don't want a shiny piece when you're trying to build a puzzle and the light's shining on it and you've got a lot of reflection and things, so I really do like the feel of these pieces. I like the look of them. Just putting them under the light, there's no real reflection there at all. So that's excellent, that's a tick in my book. Um, it looks like a good striking image um, in terms of the colours. They look bold and bright, just like on the box image. And I think when this puzzle comes together, it's gonna look just as amazing as the box um, or the poster. Um, we've got a good mixture of the shapes. Um, we've got, what have we got? Obviously we've got edges, we've got the the three ins and one out, we've got a standard shape there. We've got the two ins, two outs, kind of an adjacent sides. We've got, what else? I think we might have all the different kind of standard shapes covered. We've got four ins there. Um, we've got, now then I've not spotted a three ins and one out yet. I'm sure they must be. Oh, there's one. There's one there. And they're quite, even though they're obviously those shapes, they're a little bit sort of different. Some of them are a bit kind of wonky or slanted, which again, I really like, just adds a bit of a quirkiness to a puzzle. You know, they're not all kind of just straight lines. So uh, I, I'm really looking forward to doing this. I think that these pieces look excellent. Um, so plan of action really with these is to, um, I think I'll sort, I think I'll sort, because the thing with this puzzle is there are very obvious delineations uh, between the different fruits. Um, so if you don't have kind of a dark background between them, then you've got the different fruits overlapping and that creates kind of a solid line. I mean, obviously there's more than one orange. Um, so, you know, when I sort by color, they'll be at different parts of the puzzle, but there aren't so many that I'm gonna, you know, get stuck. I don't think um, the big red ones seem to be kind of more in the corners. So obviously I'll be able to kind of use the edges to orientate myself with that. Um, yeah, I, I think this puzzle is gonna be, I think it lends itself to sorting. So I'm, I'm gonna sort by color, um, possibly sort, with a bit more detail in terms of when, like when red meets yellow or when orange meets lemon or, you know, lime meets grapefruit or something like that. So um, I'll maybe sort with kind of more detail than just red, orange, yellow, green. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll do that first and then I will, um, I'll get building this puzzle. I can't, I can't wait. <laughs> I hope you enjoy.
Right, so I'm starting to fill out these oranges. So the way I kind of approached this was I sort of went by texture and colour. So like, for example, this orange here is um, has some really dark shadowed parts. So I guess, I mean, you can see a couple of overlapping um, limes, I think, uh, which has obviously created a shadow, which means that they kind of stood out because they were darker. Texture wise, this one, not only is this one brighter, but these pieces are kind of smoother too. There's sort of less kind of harsh white lines on this one where, you know, the white bits of the segments are. Um, so they were kind of, I've like put those there, they're sort of smooth as well. So I assume they'll go in here somewhere. Um, and that's in opposition to say this one, which has a lot more kind of light shining off it that you can see more white, it looks sort of juicier. So I've sort of gone like that. I mean, if I was really being efficient, I could have sorted again. I could have even sorted by shape because these pieces are very, um, very obviously different shapes. There's a good variety of different shapes. So I could have done that, but I wanted to avoid more sorting because I don't particularly enjoy it. And I'm enjoying this puzzle so much. I just don't mind going a bit slower with it, really. So that's how I've kind of been approaching it. Um, the the feel of these pieces going in is really satisfying because they're quite thick, um, they're quite chunky, they sort of press in really nicely, um, and I mean I've mentioned before the soft feel of the pieces just makes them really nice to kind of handle, um, and I agree with what the box says about it being like a sensory experience. Um, these pieces really do feel nice when you're putting them in and when you're picking them up and moving them around and things. So so far this puzzle's really really enjoyable so i'm gonna try and <clears throat> finish up these orange pieces um what i've done here is these are the pieces where it was kind of the edges of different fruits but i've actually sort of separated them a bit and spread them out because because these are like have all different fruits on them i feel like i'm able to when i reach the edge of a fruit and it starts to kind of encroach on another fruit like this lemon here I feel like I can sort of see what kind of piece I need and just glance over and try and pick it out. I wasn't able to do that with all of these pieces involved. These are all pieces with the kind of the dark background. It's almost like a dark purple kind of spongy texture. And I've separated those as well because I think they could be kind of a pile of pieces to do in their own right where I'm sort of filling in the little gaps between the fruits. So that's the idea between these pieces. It's just so I can glance across and grab them when I need them. So I'm going to finish these and then I'm going to start on those reds and hopefully I'll find this missing edge piece when I do those. Uh, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this so far. So here's the progress so far. Um, I must admit, I've taken a completely different direction with uh, the order of things in this puzzle. <laughs> I was going to do the reds after I'd done the oranges, but I very quickly discovered that there's kind of too many of them. Um, and I did a little kind of mini sort where I kind of sorted out these sort of pinky coloured pieces and any pieces where there was sort of red and pink at the side. Um, and basically, I sort of, I managed to put a few of those together and obviously they were the edge of the fruit. So then they kind of overlapped with the pieces that were up there, which are all gone now. Um, these pieces with the kind of the background. So what's actually ended up happening is I've kind of built up more of a sort of framework, just like the outline of the rest of the fruit. 
And really, it's now just a case of filling them all in. Um, I am still a bit back and forth because um, I've, I've just sort of been content to just kind of roll with it with this puzzle. <laughs> I've, I've had such a fun time and just chilled out completely whilst I've been doing it. And I just didn't really want to force any kind of agenda on it or sorting or anything like that. I'll do a little bit of shape sorting here and there. But I just wanted... I don't know if this is going to make much sense, but I wanted the puzzle to tell me really what to do next. And um, so this is kind of what's happened as a result of that. So I think um, part of the problem as well is that the the lemon pieces, the sort of the yellowy pieces and also the lime pieces are very, are very similar shade. And it's hard to differentiate between what's lemon and what's lime. Some have a quite an obvious green tint to them. Some even are a little bit brown, so I was able to kind of pick those out and put them in. Um, but I think now, um, I think I'm coming to the point where I've still got a lot of reds. There's big kind of blood oranges and grapefruits here. Um, so I've still got a lot of reds, so I'm just going to leave those and I'm going to work on that pile up there and this pile here. I think that was supposed to be lemons and that was supposed to be limes, but I'm just going to kind of mix them up and possibly just put them out here and um, perhaps do them by shape. Because I've got this framework now, I can slot in shapes and stuff probably pretty quickly. So um, I'm going to do that, work on the yellows and the greens, and then I'll move on to the reds. the citrus burst puzzle by Tanya Wicks um, completed and finished and I have to say I loved everything about this puzzle I can't think of a single thing I didn't like about it honestly it was just such a joy to do I, I sound like I'm kind of exaggerating but I'm really not I, I loved the image the colors are just so bright and lovely and you know, you've got the whole range of citrus fruits here, so I'm not, I wasn't just doing loads of oranges or loads of lemons. It was there was a good mixture of red and orange and green and yellow. Um, even the dark of the background, you know, had its place in there without that being too much. The the image and the colours um, and the quality of the image was spot on. I just thought it was brilliant, and I'm really glad I chose this particular puzzle. Um, 
the pieces, oh, the pieces felt so soft. I said this a couple of times when I was actually building it. They just have a really nice soft feel about them. So it's just nice handling them. Um, and it made them um, very matte as well. So, you know, even if you put them directly in front of a light, there is really no glare or reflection at all, which I like. I mean, that is a definite plus for me with any puzzle. So I love the matte feel. I love the softness. I love the fact that the shapes were standard shapes, but with a bit of a difference, a bit of a randomness to them, kind of slightly wonky. Um, that made it, that helped me put it together, but it didn't make it too easy. There, there was still a challenge. There was enough kind of blocks of colour to present some challenge. It, it was just the right difficulty level. I just, I, I, it was just right, basically. <laughs> it was like Goldilocks. It was just right. Um, and really, I don't have much more to say than that. It, I, I would definitely do another Tanya Wicks puzzle um, as and when I can get round to uh, having one sent over from, <laughs> from Australia. Um, it, it really was, it really was a joy. I thought it was um, a beautiful, beautiful puzzle. And in fact, I'm actually considering putting this in a frame and hanging it in my kitchen. It's it's a puzzle that's just really nice to look at. It makes me feel healthy looking at it. <laughs> I said that earlier and it sounds silly, but I'm serious. The, the colours are so vivid and the photography is so kind of focused that it's like you're looking at real fruit. I, it's, I don't know what it is. Sometimes it feels like I can smell it. It's bizarre. Um, it's bizarre. It's had a really bizarre effect on me, this puzzle, but it's just so good. I think I'm going to put it in my kitchen um, and hopefully somewhere where there'll be no steam that can get to it or anything like that. And um, I, think it will, I think it will look lovely in there. So, um, yeah, I... I Definite thumbs up, spot on. This puzzle was absolutely spot on. Um, I didn't take a time on it again. Um, I did. People like to know how long puzzles take me, but honestly, this puzzle was quite relaxing to do. It was almost like doing a gradient. I think maybe because it was so colour focused, um, it was like quite relaxing. Um, and so I just kind of didn't really want to get stressed out with any kind of sort of timing factor um, involved. So I just thought, oh, well, I'll just do it and not worry about the time. I, it took a couple of days. I can say that much. It seemed to go together pretty fast. Um, but yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this puzzle. So um, I'll pop some links in the description for Tanya Wicks's website and um, can go on and have a look at her other puzzles. I would highly, highly recommend it. They are, this one was absolutely lovely and I really would look forward to doing another one of hers. I quite liked the one, she's got one with um, lots of different cacti. Um, I can't remember the name of it. I'll, I'll put a graphic on the screen because I can't remember the name of it just now, but uh, quite like that one. That was one of the ones I was tossing up when I, you know, when I was trying to decide which one to get. That one and also the seashells. I like the seashells. Um, so yeah, so do go on to her website and have a wee look at that. Um, because uh, it's, it's, it's lovely. It's a really, really lovely puzzle. So thank you, Tanya Wicks. Thank you for sending it to me. Thank you also for the tea bag, which I still haven't used yet, but I did drink a nice glass of lemonade while I was doing this. I said it at the beginning, I actually did, and it was really lovely. So <laughs> I'd recommend that too. Drink or eat something citrusy while you're doing this puzzle. It, it, it really, um, it works. <laughs> It works. Okay, I'm going to head off just now. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like on the video. And if you um, have watched this video and you um, think you might like some of my other videos, then please do consider subscribing because I have got so many more where these came from. So um, yeah, in the meantime, I will say happy puzzling to you and I'll see you in the next one. See you later. Quickly, something I forgot to mention, um, the puzzle pickup challenge. Here it is, and I have every confidence that this is gonna be fine. It holds together so well. That's something I meant to mention and I completely forgot. But anyway, just in case you needed the proof, voila, it is solid, really solid. I am swinging this around, tilting it, twisting it. It's a really solid puzzle. Another thumbs up. <laughs> Bye.